You know they say all games are created equal, but if you look at TNA Impact and you look at all of the wrestling games, you can see that statement is not true. See, normally, if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestling game, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. Sadly, that isn't really the case for TNA Impact, so Steiner Math must end there. Twelve years ago today, a little game called TNA Impact hit shelves. I, a fan of TNA Wrestling to a truly unhealthy degree, travelled to my local GameStop after school and said one copy of TNA Impact please. They then asked me for ID for a 15 rated game, I didn't have one on me, despite being 16 at the time, and I had to slink back with my dad an hour later. Curse my youthful good looks. I didn't play a ton of the ECW or WCW games of the 90s, so most of my childhood wrestling video game experience was defined by WWE's games. I may have briefly dabbled in WCW Backstage Assault or ECW Hardcore Revolution, but it was mostly the SmackDown games, followed by the SmackDown vs Raw games. Finally though, there was a new contender in town. Made by Midway Games and backed up by the pedigree of the people behind Mortal Kombat, the wild and wacky world of TNA Wrestling was finally brought to life. The Impact Zone, Ultimate X, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, LAX, Mike Tanay and Don West, many of the staples of TNA were finally turned into a video game. Twelve years on from its release, I figured I'd go back and see what one of the few major alternatives to WWE's games the last 20 years had to offer. Back in 2005, as Tina had just launched on Spike TV, they began to shop around for a video game. Apparently they were in negotiations with EA and Rockstar before they eventually inked a deal with Midway. I can only imagine what a Rockstar produced TNA game would have looked like, and I kinda wanna live in the alternative reality where it happened. AJ Styles and Samoa Joe had creative input into the game, meeting with Midway to discuss ideas, and Midway had fighting game pedigree with Mortal Kombat, so there was hope we'd have the next great wrestling game. It didn't really pan out that way. Midway went bust shortly after the game came out, and it was clear they rushed it out before it was really ready. Nearly every aspect of the game felt undercooked. There were few match types, entrances were short, there were too few moves so many wrestlers felt similar, the creator wrestler was really basic and it just felt like a game that was released a year too early. That's not to say there weren't positives, we'll talk about that more in depth in a minute, but the total package fell short of what people hoped for. That's particularly a shame given this ended up being the only TNA console game. The basic bones of something really good were there, it just didn't have time to develop. Let's start with the roster, because that may be the bright spot of the game. First of all, the game looks great, especially for a relatively early PS3 game. It still looks pretty solid to this day, and honestly with the way the WWE 2K series has failed to push the boundaries visually, it compares surprisingly well to modern titles. The attention to detail in the character models goes above and beyond. AJ Styles had a cut in his lip when he was scanned for his model, and that made it into his game model. That's really neat. While the likes of Kurt Angle or Booker T were in previous WWE games, this was the first video game appearance for the likes of Styles and Samoa Joe, and while they would go on to feature in later WWE games, where else would you get Abyss or Shark Boy or LAX in a game? Or, perhaps most importantly, Don West. The only real disappointment is that Relic, that's killer spell backwards, didn't make it into the game. Everybody has their finishing moves so they feel at least somewhat distinct. They cut corners for the entrances with most of them only being like 20 seconds long. The argument at the time was that most people skip the entrances after the first time, but you still want those full, detailed entrances. Also for some reason Kevin Nash is only available in street clothes. He plays a big role in the story dress like that, but it's very odd that they didn't put him in his gear. Regardless, you can do Age of Styles vs Jay Lethal or Beer Money vs LAX in this game, so what more could you want from this roster? There are the staple singles, handicap, tag team, three-way and four-way matches available. Tag team matches suck, and the partner AI is terrible with your partner even occasionally breaking up your own pinfalls. God damn it Eric Young, I can't take you anywhere. Falls Count Anywhere allows pins on the floor, but that doesn't really feel different. Then there's Ultimate X, the big original TNA stipulation in the game. It's pretty well implemented as you can do big moves and dives from the cables. And that's it! No King of the Mountain or Monster's Ball, not even cage or ladder matches. No barbed wire Christmas tree or fish market street fight matches either. While I would get over the meme matches not being in the game, though I would like to slap somebody with a fish in a wrestling game. Ultimate X being the only match type that really feels different makes the game feel shallow. In terms of gameplay, honestly the game feels really good. 
The counter system rules and chaining together counters to counters is very satisfying. It's fast paced and arcadey. Doing cool dives and wacky springboards is a ton of fun. While the roster looks great, there's not nearly enough variety in the movesets, so many characters end up playing similarly outside of their different finishers. There are two broad categories, heavyweights and X Division wrestlers. Those two categories feel different, but everybody within them doesn't. Loki should feel distinctly more different to play as than Chris Saban, but that isn't really the case. Up to the point when this game was released, TNA had basically two iconic arenas, the Impact Zone in Orlando and the Asylum in Nashville. I give the game a pass for not having a huge variety of arenas to choose from if they were both in there, because there wasn't a ton of history to draw from at the time, but peculiarly, they're not. The Impact Zone is there, and it looks really nice, it feels faithful to the longtime home of TNA, six-sided ring and all. The Asylum being left out is odd though. They instead opted to include arenas based on the UK, Japan and Vegas that had no real connection to TNA history. Then there's the story of the game, probably the most iconic part of the game given the suicide character who came to life and appeared on Impact, still regularly appears on Impact to this very day. If you had asked me before replaying this game what the strongest part of TNA Impact was, I'd have told you it was the story mode. And it starts out hot. You play a suicide who has finally reached the top of the mountain and become TNA World Heavyweight Champion before he's brutally attacked by LAX and left for dead in Mexico. Suicide then has amnesia and gets reconstructive surgery as you create a character to play through the story as. That is a strong first impression. As you can see I created Gert, every generic bald wrestler ever. Listen, the creator wrestler tools aren't the most robust. Don't judge Gert. From there the story becomes a little more bland. You mostly work your way through the divisions in an endless series of matches before you eventually take down the man behind it all. Because of course, Jeff Jarrett would be the main villain of the story. He is the King of the Mountain after all and it ends with you becoming TNA World Heavyweight Champion once again. Eric Young is among the highlights as you form the utterly charming team of Salty Biscuits with him before he is kidnapped by Homicide, and you do get wonderful guidance from Big Sexy himself. The whole thing is like 5 hours long and it is significantly padded with matches against no-name creator wrestlers, but it's fun enough for what it is, and with Suicide still on our television screens to this day, it's the game's lasting legacy. There are a few other things in there. There's an extra section that has roster profiles, a series of behind the scenes specials, two exclusive matches, plus three matches from the TNA archive. The behind the scenes specials are the highlight giving you a really neat look at the making of the game. It's weird the two exclusive matches have never been re-released anywhere. The Knockouts Gauntlet is pretty forgettable but the X Division 6 man is really good and the only place you can watch it is by booting up this game. They chose some very wacky matches from the archive, but the highlight is a real great Chris Saban vs Juventud Guerrero match. All in all, it's nice that they decided to throw in these little bonuses. TNA Impact felt like the foundation of a good wrestling game. The beginnings of a franchise that would, over time, grow into something really fun. You could see the potential when you go back and revisit it. With a couple of more iterations, it would have become the full-fledged wrestling experience people wanted from it. Midway could have built on it year over year to add in the modes, moves, and entrances that felt missing. Sadly, that never happened. Despite TNA Impact 2 being officially announced and anticipated for release in 2010, Midway filed for bankruptcy in February of 2009, only six months after TNA Impact was released. Warner Brothers Interactive purchased the majority of Midway, but the TNA license was not included. DS and PSP ports were later released by South Peak Games, and that was it. The potential that this foundation had was never fulfilled, and what we ended up with was a fun but frivolous glimpse into the world of TNA Wrestling. A game that delivered the stars of TNA, but didn't give you nearly enough to do with them. In some ways, that could be seen as a metaphor for the history of TNA in general, a story of what could have been, but TNA Impact remains a fun time capsule of 2008 TNA. With big stars of old, the wrestlers of the future, and people who would never appear in a game again, it's fun to nostalgically revisit that era, even if it's just for a good time, not for a long time. Thank you so much for watching, that is TNA Impact, a game 
that I have a lot of nostalgia for, even if it's probably not that good. But nostalgia is more important than good, that's of course all that matters in the world. I just want to hear the entrance music. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If you really enjoyed it, you can hit subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Garrickidney, G-A-R-R-E-T-T-K-I-D-N-E-Y. On your left, my retrospective review of Final Fantasy VII. On your right, my retrospective review of Super Mario Galaxy 2. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.